Hi, and welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secret Podcast. Today we are continuing our discussion about practical ways to increase and have high morale in your workplace. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. I'm Kale Hauser. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I hope you're finding this beneficial as we've gone through a couple practical ways to increase and have high morale in your workplace. Uh, starting as a quick review, we want to connect with our employees. That's really where everything comes down to is how we connect with them and how we connect with our teammates, as well as how we connect with those above us, You know that those are that are in leadership or managerial positions above us. Uh, we want to make sure we are getting feedback, especially on big decision, big policy changes within the company, um, but also on those day-to-day things um, that may be seen as lesser importance, but they're still critical nonetheless. Uh, and then our last podcast, we talked about esteem and how to make sure you are recognizing people for outstanding work. And not so much on the formal end, but more on the spot and as you see it and as it comes up. And then we finished our podcast last time uh, with talking about planning fun events with your whole team. Uh, Really to start with maybe on a monthly basis would be the most appropriate, but figuring out how to fit that into your workplace culture and workplace um, schedule. And then also realizing that there may be some pushback and there may be some uh, process to that in order to get everyone uh, to be interested in something like that. Okay, so along those lines and as we're building this pyramid and we're building these, um, putting these building blocks together, we want to talk today about one of those types of events. And really this is, this is the, the lunch, okay? Uh, or the free lunch for lack of a better term. So if you are able, treating the entire office And again, you may not be able because your entire office, your entire department may be 50 people and doing a lunch for 50 people, you know, what's that say on average 20 bucks, 25 bucks times five. So you may not have that kind of cheddar in your slush fund in order to treat everyone to free lunch. Um, Or maybe it's something a little more low key that you, you know, order one of those, what are they like 10 foot subs and you kind of do that and you order a Costco cake and, and all that kind of stuff. But this is about showing appreciation okay providing that free meal that free lunch is showing that appreciation but it's showing it during the work day okay if you're on a normal kind of banker's hours right you're eight to five nine to six um, everyone has a similar lunch this is easier to implement because you can be like hey everybody you know i've got sandwiches coming or i ordered a chick-fil-a platter and we're going to have all kinds of sandwiches and nuggets and you know whatever the case whatever is popular or or I was able to convince the taco truck to come by and you know your first three tacos are are on us here's a voucher for everyone we're gonna do this kind of as a as a team Um, but this is about showing them appreciation and bringing people together now you may want to do this either as a kind of end of project reward like hey you guys rocked it on the the fine the Seinfeld case, you know, everyone came together. We were really under this tight time constraint and our budget was insane, but we pulled it together. We knocked it out of the park. So this is a way to show appreciation, a really quick and informal way. It doesn't take a lot of planning. This isn't like a big end of year Christmas party that takes, you know, committees and all that kind of stuff. This is something that, hey, our group of 10, I just booked, you know, the Chili's or the Applebee's, whatever your local restaurant is in your neighborhood or in your area. Um, we're going to go hit lunch and lunch is on us as the company because you guys just crushed it on, you know, XYZ client that we just closed or that we just did. Or on the flip side, this is a, hey, everybody, we just picked up the Feldman case and this is going to be huge for our company. This could be a game changer for not only our revenue that we go through, but also how we're seen in our marketplace, how, you know, all these things, whatever that may be for you. Um, But this is a way to really kind of prep the field for what you understand as the leader is the amount of effort that's about to come up. Like I want I wanted to bring everyone together here for this lunch to kind of, you know, give you that advance warning like this is going to be a lot of work. We really need everybody here, Uh, maybe not to the level that we're canceling vacations. But hey, if you were just kind of taking your vacation to, you know, just burn your days, you know, would you consider, you know, rescheduling that kind of thing? 
Um, but this is a way, again, to bring people together outside of your formal work environment, even if that's in your break room, right? If you just, like I said, you brought in a, a massive Subway sandwich or, you know, went down to your local taco shop and, you know, had them deliver a bunch of taco fixings, whatever that may be for you. Um, this is a way for people to over food because that's a commonality between every single one of us to connect and uh, whether it be celebrate a big win or strategize an upcoming um, strain, potential strain on, on your workplace. So I want to encourage you and this doesn't have to be a big expensive thing. You don't have to go down to the Ruth's Chris and drop you know, $100 on every single employee as you're going through, unless that's what's appropriate. Maybe you just closed a $100 million deal and you've got a, a kind of some extra money. That may be appropriate for you. Um, but if you're you know, running a local plumbing agency, that $100 million deal may not be it. And maybe you are more of the level of uh, a Chili's or, you know, Think of any any of your local restaurants that is a favorite in your town. Um, that's kind of not the point of it. The point of it is providing an opportunity for people to come together and either celebrate or strategize something upcoming and a way for you to show that appreciation. All right. And then as, as we continue this journey, we continue these notes. Um, schedule <laughs> let's talk about schedule for a little bit and this and i apologize if this ends up taking up the rest of it but this is important analyzing your schedule and it may it this may not be important to you because we're like yep we're a bank we we open at nine our people have to be here at 8 30 and we close at five you know and, and we do our lunch you know we work out our lunch in between there somehow so they're very set shifts you know we're monday through friday but you also may be something that is 24 hours that you may be on call hours um, all kinds of things may your hours may fluctuate go up or down depending on your client load and and what you're dealing with with that but i want you to encourage you that looking at your schedule because that is the besides the amount of money that your employee or your teammates are being paid the schedule is the number one impact on their life that you have Okay, let me say that again. Besides paying them, you know, $10 an hour or $1,000 an hour, the schedule of what you need from them to work for you is the number one impact on their life. And I would argue is almost more important because there is a point where the money is no longer worth it if the schedule is so horrible, okay? Um, there is a point where if they are, if they've been working midnight shift, you know, the 11 to 7 a.m. and they're, it's starting to have that effect of their spouse at home is like you're never home and when you are you're sleeping and when i'm home you're gone and i'm you know i didn't get married so i can sleep by myself every night um there is a point where money will not matter they will seek other employment even if that means taking a pay cut because that quality of life comes in so i would you could make an argument that schedule is more important certainly long term more important than the money if those people are you know looking at quality of life now certainly if they're looking to just make some money if you're the type of industry and I came out of this type of industry where uh, we worked or we were on duty 12 hours a day seven days a week uh, because we were deployed that was just the you know when we went to whatever country we were deployed to that was the schedule now we didn't work 12 hours a day seven days a week but we worked seven days a week um, and we worked every day but our pay was high so that compensated for that but everyone gets to, and everyone was in varying degrees of, of my fellow coworkers and certainly me, we got to a point where the schedule just wasn't worth it. Being deployed for three months at a time and away from my family, while great that I get to be home for three months at a time, uh, not have to work, it, it started to become not worth it. And certainly the company could not you know, pay me enough that it would have made it work that, you know, like, oh, here's a million dollars, right? Like, sure, I'll, I'll leave for three months for a million dollars. But we, the point being, we were paid very well uh, for being gone and separated from our families, but after a certain amount of time, that appeal of that paycheck was less valuable and less valuable and less valuable as other issues started to become more priority uh, in my life. And that certainly happens with people. So in talking about the schedule and analyzing your schedule, you really need to look if changes can be made 
to allow for a more consistent time off or an easier flow of shifts, okay? And again, like I said, you may be um, on that 24 hour shift and you've got people that they don't necessarily want to be on mid shift for the rest of their life or the rest of the time that they work for you and you shouldn't expect them to. And maybe there's a way, and we certainly had this because in the military we were 24 seven operations. We flowed through, we had days, swings, mids, and we flowed through that, I think it was every 45 days if I remember correctly. Um, which had its advantages and disadvantages. It was difficult to constantly be moving that, um, you know, with swings and, you know, especially if you had kids, right? Then with swings, you're essentially not seeing your children, uh, especially if they're in school because you go to work at, you know, two in the afternoon. So they're not even home from school yet. You don't get home until after midnight and then you're sleeping unless you do a short sleep and get up with them in the morning before they go to school. You, it's very difficult to see them on that type of schedule. And then of course you have your spouse issue on the mid shift, but the single guys, the swings was their favorite because they're, you know, they're more night owls. They enjoyed that. They went to the gym afterwards and nobody's in the gym at one in the morning. Um, so they kind of really enjoyed that type of shift. But then when they would come around to like the day shift for them getting up at six in the morning to be at work at 730 um, was difficult. And that was, uh, was stressful for, for a lot of people. But you want to really analyze this and don't be afraid to seek input um from your people because they're the ones living it they're the ones that are are really prioritizing and, and racking and stacking in their brain of what's worth it what's not worth it do i want to keep doing this is there an end to this or am i stuck with this forever so i will say just maybe not a super quick story so i was a flight commander for our combat flight uh, back in the air force and before I became that, and that's the person, think of that as a mid-level manager. I was a captain at the time, and I'm in charge of my group of pilots and air crew uh, for their scheduling, approving leave, writing you know, performance reports. Um, I was the interface or the mediary between the commander, who was my direct supervisor of our squadron, and then I was the supervisor of, of the younger officers and enlisted uh, that were part of my team. So, and I told myself again, going back to the schedule, we were 24 seven ops, you know, Christmas day or middle of September didn't matter. We were, we were flying and, and it was, it was a beast to manage all these things because people still get sick and people get hurt and things happen. People want to take vacation. Like imagine that. Uh, but I told myself one of the things that always got under my skin. So the air force and the military in general, we get federal holidays off but they also will add what they call family days around a federal holiday. So let's, you know, for example, uh, Thanksgiving always falls on a Thursday. Well, instead of just giving us, you know, Thursday off, they created a family day on that Friday. So you essentially got a four day weekend and they would do that around almost every holiday. So if, you know, if Labor Day fell on a Monday or, or Friday, I'm probably showing my ignorance here, they would give you that Friday off. So you essentially had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off and it, and it created four day weekends. Well, we never got that. If you happen to have your shift flow fall on that weekend, too bad, bro. That's so sad. You missed out on those because they weren't official part of our, our leave policy that we were entitled to as just part of working in, and being in the military. They were essentially free days that our command had given us, you know, to make life easier. And what always was kind of irked me a little bit is other than the 24 seven type of career field. So your security forces and your police, um, the guys running the tower, cause you know, planes would still come and go. And then people like us doing actual operations, uh, everyone else got those four day weekends. Every, every holiday, you know, the finance guys, the, you know, the maintenance guys, cause you know, they weren't running maintenance over the weekends, uh, at least for the most part. And they certainly, that did happen, but for the most part, they would shut down for a holiday weekend. And I told myself, hey, as a younger officer, I'm like, if I ever became a flight commander, that's one of the things I want to do because it's, we were getting essentially screwed out of, I wanna say like 15 days of free vacation a year that everyone else in the Air Force was getting and we weren't. And I just thought that was, that was pretty rotten, you know? And we arguably, we worked harder and, and put in more hours than a lot of these other career fields in the military. Um, Try not to hate me too much for saying that, but that's just how we felt, certainly. And I finally did become a flight commander. 
And after getting settled and looking at the schedule, I figured out a way in our schedule for my flight without affecting the other flights to cover our shifts to be able to give every single one of us a four day weekend plus or minus, I think it was plus or minus about a week of that actual holiday. So yes, I couldn't guarantee that everyone would have 4th of July weekend off that four day weekend. But I could guarantee within a week before or a week after you would get a four day weekend. And who wouldn't take that? Like, I understand, yep, I signed up to serve my country. We do 24 seven ops. Somebody's gotta still man the man the battlefields on 4th of July weekend. But cool, I'll, I'll be off, you know, July 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. That'd be awesome. I still get to be with my family or go do whatever I wanna do. Um, so I kind of created this plan. I worked it all out of my head. It didn't take me that long, honestly, of looking at the schedule. I went to my commander, said, hey, sir, this is what I want to do. I think in kind of just what I told you, I think it's kind of unfair that we're not getting this. He looked at it and says, okay, yep. But because this doesn't fall on the actual family day, right? Because you're given you're given this person these other days off instead of that 4th of July weekend, they're getting the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th off. Um, it falls under this special rule of essentially because we're 24 seven ops, we got to do this special thing of uh, the commander could give us a pass for that day. And it's all basically the exact same thing as the family day, except it came from our commander versus the whole base commander, right? So it makes sense. And that rule was put in place for this type of situation where we work a ton of hours and that commander has to have that ability to give out passes uh, for days off as needed. So short story, Long story, slightly shorter. He goes, yep, go for it, Kale, that's that's great. I, you have my full blessing to do it. Sweet, boom, 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 went and did it. And I asked my flight ahead of time, I said, hey, this is what I wanna do, this is what I'm thinking about, this are the benefits, this will be the slight cost here. You know, you might have to work an extra two hours on one of our shifts or, or fly an extra two hours, not even work an extra two hours, like fly an extra two hours, but you're gonna get a four day weekend and everyone else is gonna get a four day weekend plus or minus this one week. And hey, surprise, everyone was on board. They were willing to do that. And it worked out fantastically. And I even went to my other flight commanders because there were four of us, if I remember correctly, and said, you know, hey, just so you know, I'm doing this with my flight and word is gonna spread. So you may want to hint, hint, look at doing this for your flight because this is important. This is a big deal. And, you know, and surprise, not surprisingly, word did get out. Well. And I may continue this in another story, but it surprised me how much pushback I got from my fellow flight commanders. So we'll leave it at that because this is an important concept to understand. No good deed goes unpunished, right? No matter how good you think you're doing or how awesome of an idea you've come up with to make everybody's quality of life better, you will get pushback. And you will get pushback maybe from some unlikely sources that you expected to be on your side. All right, so I'll leave it at that. I'm gonna pick it up here in the next episode uh, to continue this story. If, if, I, if I forget between now and tomorrow, remind me. Ha! Shoot me an email at kale at kalehauserleadership.com. Again, thank you for spending your time with me. I hope this was beneficial to you and I've left you with a, a little enticement to want to join me again for the next episode. Uh, no matter where you are at in the world, have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you soon.